So, you know, I really want to continue talking about this a little bit more, this, this idea of emotivism, the idea that your emotions are the only guide you have toward morality is nuts, and it drives people nuts. And I really believe, you know, a lot of the stuff we see on uh, college campuses, I believe is induced mental illness. Now, a lot of kids, you know, nowadays when, when kids are depressed or when they're <clears throat> inattentive or when they're active, you know, they don't send them to somebody who'll talk to them about the fact that their parents are divorced or their mother wasn't home or whatever it is that was bothering them. They drug them. They give them drugs, and the drugs get rid of their depression. Everybody says, oh, this is so much better. <clears throat> you know, now I gave my little boy Ritalin. He doesn't run around like a little boy. He sits in a seat like a zombie. It's so much easier. Everybody's so much happier. And then, of course, these kids go off to school, and they stop taking the drugs because who wants to be drugged up all the time? And then they're nuts, you know? <laughs> I mean, then they, they, the mental illness comes out, and they get a lot of depression, a lot of suicide, a lot of stuff that, that comes out in campuses. Plus, there are these college professors selling them this idea that if they're angry, someone else is to blame. If they're angry, society is at fault. If they're angry, they've been abused. They've been, uh, they're, you know, in, on some intersectional chart of abuse. And this is the whole, the, this induced psychopathology that I really believe is now affecting the left throughout as Donald Trump takes away from them the reality they wanted there. They wanted Hillary Clinton. Reality didn't pan out. They feel so bad. They feel so bad that it must be right to abandon their journalistic principles. It must be right to uh, abandon the, the search for truth if they hate guns. Well, let me ask you this. S Steve Scalise, the congressman who was shot and almost killed by that Bernie bro at the uh, Washington softball game, he recently came back, a very beautiful scene. He came back and people were cheering him and he made a speech and all this stuff. He was recently on CBS, and I believe this interview was before Vegas. So I'm not saying this is in relation to Vegas, but the the woman said he's a Scalise is a big defender of the Second Amendment. And the interviewer asked him, "How can this be when you yourself were shot?" And here's Scalise's cool, non-emotional, non-emotive answer. But you're now a victim of gun violence. Yeah, but I'm also saved by uh, well-trained people who had guns to to shoot back and whatever the weapon's gonna be. I mean, if it's if it's not a gun, it'll be a hand grenade or it'll be a, a knife or an ax. Uh, you know, I think what's important to focus on is that we have strong rights in this country and, you know, we, uh, we're protected by them. Do you think all congressmen and women should be able to have concealed carry permits? I'm a strong believer in concealed carry legislation. It comes with proper training, and I do think it's important to remember uh, that if you're going to have a firearm, it's, it's important that you know how to use it and how to protect your family so that uh, doesn't get into the wrong hands. But it's, it's every day in America you see people use their firearms to protect them against a criminal. So there's a guy who actually took a bullet, <clears throat> you know, from a mad shooter and is defending the right to bear arms. Why isn't he more authoritative than weepy Jimmy Kimmel? Why, why does Jimmy Kimmel think that his tears, and again, I'm not making fun of his emotions, I'm making fun of the fact that he uses his emotions to sell a political point of view that he doesn't know that much about. I mean, these guys keep saying stuff like they talk about, oh, the gun show loophole. It's not a loophole, it's the Second Amendment, pal. You know, there's, there are rules uh, against there are rules when you go into a, a store and buy guns, and some of those rules don't apply to private sales between people. That's not a loophole. It's not a loophole. That's the second, the second Amendment. He says a lot of things, Jimmy Kimmel, that just aren't true and just aren't accurate, uh, but he's crying, so it's all important. Let me just show you some of the true craziness that came out yesterday because of this em emotivism. CBS Corporation fired a vice president in business affairs for comments she made on social media regarding the mass shooting at a country music festival in Las Vegas. Her name was Haley Geftman Gold, and she wrote on her Facebook page um, that she was not sympathetic to the victims of the shooting because most country music fans, she said, are Republicans. And she wrote, if they wouldn't do anything with children when children were murdered, meaning if Republicans wouldn't pass gun control after Sandy Hook, I have no hope that repugs, as she calls them, will ever do the right thing. I'm actually not even sympathetic because country music fans often are Republican gun toters. The comments were deleted, but not before they were picked up by a number of blogs and websites. And a petition was posted online to call for her firing, and she was fired. As she should have been fired. I mean, come on, you know, like the, uh, Richard Dawkins, the atheist, 
right? The famous atheist. This, is, this guy's a scientist, right? He tweets. <laughs> this is yeah. I, I, I can barely read this stuff. He tweets, "Dern tootin, great shootin, cool, cool dude, certain he's Second Amendment rots. Hell yeah." I mean, 60 people are dead, 59 people are dead, you know? I mean, that that is, there's something wrong. What I'm saying is, it's not just mean, it's not just cool, there's something wrong. There's a disconnect between the reality of the situation and the reaction. Uh, you know, here was uh, Jeff Zelaney. The, he's, I always have to remind you, he's the New York Times, former New York Times reporter, who, he was a White House reporter whose first interview with Barack Obama. He asked him, what did chance you about the presidency? Just a complete left winger. So now he's on, I think he's CNN. And, he, you know, Trump, the, the hilarious thing yesterday, if he, hilarious is the word I want, ironic, I guess is the word I want, was that Donald Trump was restrained. You know, Donald Trump, not the most restrained person in the world. He got up and said, he had a pitch perfect speech where he said, this is pure evil. Our minds and thoughts are, are with the people, the morning people. We will come together as a nation, ba da ba da ba. Jeff Zeleny could barely get the praise out of his mouth without slipping into, listen to the, listen to the Freudian slips in this report. So of course, Las Vegas is a town that he is connected to and then and a knows well. His name is emblazoned on the top of a hotel there as well. He campaigned there a lot. So this is something that I'm not surprised at all to see him go there uh, visiting early. But again, I think the, the moment here is what comes after this. This invariable, I mean, invariably after uh, today and tomorrow will become a uh, discussion of politics, mm -hmm. of guns. It's not appropriate for that moment of today. Yes. You will hear it from some Got Democrats, it. but what will this okay. president do in Cedric that respect? Will he take a leadership role in that respect. We will, of course, watch that as the uh, days unfold. But uh, the president uh, clearly, as John said, striking uh, pitch perfect tone there. And something else I think to uh, keep in mind, a lot of these country music supporters were likely Trump supporters. And this is something that, of course, is uh, hitting the tapestry of all Americans. And there are going to be victims from across the country here. He's guy's babbling like an idiot, but what he's really saying was Trump only did this because he has a hotel in Vegas and because these are his supporters. That's what he's saying. He can't, they can't even bring themselves. And this goes to, back. I was talking about this yesterday, but now Trump is in Puerto Rico. He apparently met with the uh, mayor of uh, San Juan. That's what it is, right? Yeah, the mayor of San Juan, Carmen Cruz, she's the one who's been saying, oh, we're dying here. We're dying. And it's all, you know, terrible and all this stuff. I, I have to play. This is a long clip, but it's worth playing. Uh, Geraldo Rivera, reliably sentimentalist kind of liberal guy, he, he interviews her, and he's, he's been covering the island, and he says, I, I don't see anybody dying. You know, there, there were 16 people who died in these two horrible hurricanes that hit the island. But he said, but that's it, you know. So listen to this interview. Listen to her dance around the question. I, I think the president needs to get the information uh, that, that he needs to get. And apparently uh, he hasn't been getting it or he hasn't been watching the news. But are people are people dying? I've been I've been traveling around. I, I don't see people dying. I spoke to the doctors. They saw 53 patients and they had a septic, a person who was septic, but nobody dying. I, I wonder. Well, dying is a continuum, right? If you don't get fed for seven, eight days and you're a child, you are dying. If you have 11 people like we took out of a nursing home, severely dehydrated, you are dying. Um, so do you wish you had characterized that a little more? It is. I said it the way it is. I don't have to characterize anything uh, in any way that is not the reality. That is the truth. He who has eyes will be able to see it. He who has an open heart will be able to feel it. Those that prefer to be blinded to injustice, that's their issue. I have no time for that. How much of that is politics? The fact that you and the president are different parties and... Well, I, 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 I'm not a member of the Democratic Party. <laughs> Just like he says, I don't see any people dying. Well, they're not literally dying. <laughs> they're, dying they're dying in spirit, you know. They're dying. I mean, you know, and, and the thing is that Trump has claimed that he got all the aid to Puerto Rico he could as fast as he could. And the, one of the problems is that a lot of the truckers, a lot of the people on the island who were supposed to transport this stuff weren't there. And the governor of the uh, of 
Puerto Rico, Ricardo Rossello, he says the same thing. He basically confirmed everything that Trump said. Uh, play, play this cut. It's number eight. He was being questioned, I think, on The View. And, of course, they're asking these anti-Trump questions. And he said, no, the problem is exactly what Trump said it was. The president has been in contact with me uh, almost on a daily basis, so he is aware of the devastation, and I thank him for, uh, you know, uh, issuing pre-land emergency declarations, for is issuing a disaster zone declaration verbally as the uh, storm was hitting uh, Puerto Rico. He has also given instructions uh, to FEMA and other uh, federal agencies to help uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, so that that effort is ongoing, and it's uh, and it's very good, and it's very. Uh, effective. However, there are some logistical uh, uh, threats that, that we're facing. Uh, a lot of the people in Puerto Rico that used to, say, for example, truck uh, gas or food from one place to the other have not reported. Uh, so the logistical transportation of the help that's arriving to Puerto Rico is kind of becoming a bottleneck. So again and again, because they hate Donald Trump so much, because they hate you so much, because they hate the right so much, because they hate America, they, the basic idea of America so much. They're selling you this, their emotions as virtue again and again. It is a pathway to mental illness. It is a form of mental illness itself to believe that your feelings are an accurate, always an accurate description of the world. There is, as the Bible says, a time to mourn. This is a time to mourn in your mourning in your morning, as anybody will tell you about your personal life, is not when you make policy. It's not when you start debates. Why, why is it so important? Why is it so important for them to convince you that your virtue is tied up? Because their virtue is tied up in their emotions because they have no rational uh, system of figuring out what virtue is. And this is not the time to be discussing this. This is the time to be sad, which I know is tough. I know it's tough to do, but that's all you can do in a situation like this until we know more, until we know more. Our police, our law enforcement will figure it out. We'll find out more. We'll have more to discuss, and we will be here to discuss it.